Absolutely. All right. Um, according to a survey by U.S. Foods, fun part, nearly 30 percent of delivery drivers admit to eating some of our food. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you surprised, David? No, not at all. People get hungry. In fact, I'm kind of hungry right now. <laughs> well, if you want, if you're a delivery driver and you want to avoid eating your own merchandise, a good way to do this is to cook at home. Yeah. And our next guest makes this a little bit easier. Yeah. I'm a terrible cook. Uh, I'm a terrible cook. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I cook once a year if I really try. I can, you know, make no, something. No, 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 no. I cook all the time. I'll be cooking right after this. I'm a little hungry for lunch. <laughs> so he has a new app. It's called Food Space. Let's welcome Io. And we're going to mess up your last yeah. name. So we're just going to let you do it. Io Shinike. Io Shinike. Holy Shinike. Oh, like right. Ocean <laughs> Nike. Watch it, right? How did you develop the idea of this? Yeah, so I guess it's really about when I was in college going to different grocery stores and really just feeling confused, not knowing what aisle my items are in, not knowing what I have in my fridge, and not really understanding what I can make with those items. So it was really frustrating, and I just thought, why isn't there a real technology that could lead me through my whole food journey? And that's really how Food Space came about, figuring out what users want, what people want, and really leading them to have the best I guess, experience with food. So is this like Pinterest where you see recipes and whatnot and kind of pin them so you kind of have an idea of what's coming up in your food repertoire? Yeah, so it's pretty interesting. Pinterest is, they, you do save a lot of recipes there, but they're not very shoppable. So we're actually in an agreement with Pinterest to allow them to save their boards onto our platform to actually make it so it's shoppable. You can look at recipes, you can have your ingredients, change your serving sizes and go about delivering with our partner Instacart. Okay. Tell, tell me a little bit about, about your background. And oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, who are you? <laughs> Where'd you come from? <laughs> for sure. So I went to Northeastern University. I just graduated a couple years ago, and I took a finance and economics degree in biology. But I've always been really interested in food and health. So that kind of came about in when I was doing my studies and when I was figuring out food space. And really, I just live in New York, been trying to work on this company for about a year and a half now. But it's been really interesting. It's you been said a you were a finance, economics, and biology. Yes. Like, it's like a Renaissance major. man. Yeah. Well, uh, the, bio <laughs> the, the biology was a minor. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, they're all related. Yeah. It's, you know, how people behave, how people make choices. Exactly. To totally related. Exactly. So how do you think yeah. tech's going to change food? Because, you know, tech has changed a lot, it's but food. food is kind of old economy Steve, isn't it? Grocery stores haven't really changed a lot. No, definitely. What we've seen is that grocery stores have been really in kind of the old tech scene, but with Amazon disrupting the market with Whole Foods, we realize that they really have to focus on some more of their tech goals. So that's really what we're trying to help grocery stores do. Some of the other grocery stores get them involved with that, helping their users find um, inspiration and recipes, and that's really where we're trying to go with that. Wow, wow. really impressive uh, business idea. Where, yeah. where do you want to go next? I guess where we want to go next is I think one thing we really want to focus on is inventory management. So figuring out what's in your fridge, when it's about to expire, and really giving you the tools to say, hey, you have that chicken that's still left over in your fridge. How about you go making these recipes with the rest of the items that are currently there? So really and educating this is something them on we that. all run yeah. into. I, I personally have a friend who at one point was trying to build something like that, but yeah. for makeup. is like when oh, you toss out makeup. And yeah. then the, the challenge that when we went over, you know, the you know, user experience yeah. thing is um, it's a hassle for the user to scan. Like, how do you input, okay, when I bought this? Yeah. So I, I imagine you have the same challenge when it comes to food. Like, it, would it be a hassle for me if I tell you, oh, I bought my carrot, like, at yeah. 2 o'clock on this day? Yeah. Why would I do that, though? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is I think our company's all about automation. So first of all, you don't have to input any of those information. When you go about going to the grocery store, we're going to be connected to your local, your loyalty card. So right when you go out that purchasing behavior, it goes directly into our platform. We'll have the information. We'll add in expiration dates from the USDA and other organizations, and then it'll automatically be there. So really, automation is what we're trying. In to that achieve. case, you need a lot of grocery stores on board. Definitely basically, collaboration. Definitely. Yeah, but if you took out Walmart, Trader Joe's, yeah. and you know, that covers that covers a big most portion. Of yeah, Publix yeah. in the southeast. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And with Instacart being there, we're able to use them as a delivery partner as we kind of grow our grocery store businesses. So right now we're working with Stop and Shop, with Whole Foods, with um, Price Shopper. So it's been pretty interesting. You've got a big okay. po portion of the Northeastern yeah. market. Exactly. So it's time exactly. for you to go other yeah. places. Exactly. Yeah, Fred Meyer oh, out west. Yeah. It's your company right now. So right now so we're- a lot of things to yeah, doing. we're yeah. four founders, but we have around three developers that are contractors, okay. two nutritionists from Tufts, okay. a couple data scientists, and also a user experience person. And you are here in the city? 
Yes, we're in the city as well. Okay. So it's awesome. been real. Fun. Well, congrats yeah. on all your success, and we wish you all the best. Great yeah. idea. Come back Thank to you. the show and you know update yeah. us. Oh, definitely. I'd be happy to come back again, and we're excited for this. Very interesting. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much, Io. For being here. Mm -hmm. So, can you believe it? That's a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap for our show. Oh my God, I don't yeah, want to say that's this. That's the end of today's show. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yeah, if you missed part of this week's episode, you can always catch up on everything on Bold TV's Amazon Fire TV channel. I'm going to say that again. Bold's Amazon Fire TV channel. We're everywhere. Yeah, we are everywhere. We're everywhere where the cord cutters yeah. live, and that means you. Yeah, and me. So and anyway, me. don't forget to join us back here next week for more Bold TV. Why, actually, we this isn't the only thing we do. Yeah. We also have other segments. Yeah. We have newsmakers. Yeah. Julie is going to start bringing in some special yeah. guests. 2020, well, should we give it away? Yeah, yeah. 2020 yeah. presidential candidates. I mean, so, you know, yeah, no I mean, big that's, deal. That's yeah. like, <laughs> if you want to make sure you're up to date on the yeah. coffee cooler yeah. conversation at work yeah. on what he said, she said in the last Democratic debate, yeah. you might want to tune into Bold TV. TV. Yeah. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Bye.